Hey guys, just wanted to take you through how I build and adjust the optional clutch for the SRX8 GT car. Uh, it was used by all the Serpent drivers at this year's World Championships, including myself and Alessio who took TQ with it. Check out serpent.com for the latest news and advice and your local dealer network so you can get your clutch today. Cheers. So to put together your adjustable GT clutch set, you're going to need uh, some Loctite, blue or red, a uh, flywheel holding tool, 2.5mm Allen driver, universal glow plug wrench or just a 10mm uh, socket, sharp knife, set of vernier calipers or if you can get hold of a clutch measuring tool, they're pretty handy to have too. So, I've got my uh, Max Power 21 GTR motor here, first step. The collet slides over nicely. Grab your flywheel. Our flywheel nut. Screw that down. This is where you want to get your uh, flywheel holding tool. Slide straight over there. 10 mil socket. And this part we want to really crank down on. A lot of force there. No need to lock tight that one as it's on a taper so it's going to self lock. Then from here we're going to grab our shoe and our sharp knife. The shoe comes out uh, moulded like this which is can be a little bit confusing so we've actually got to cut it uh, into four pieces. So we'll do that pretty roughly to start with and then we'll tidy it up as we go along. So we've got all our shoes cut down nicely, now it's time to install. So we also do an optional yellow shoe, which is like a softer material, um, gives you more bite. We tried that a few times and maybe in high grip conditions could be okay, but the black shoe seems to work the best uh, overall. So we just slot our shoes in, then the uh, pressure plate, slide that over the top. This way the shoes are locked into place. Then from here, we'll talk about the spring. Hopefully that stays on. So the standard spring that comes with the kit is extra hard from Serpent. Uh, this is probably the perfect spring to use. Out of the box, they come at a length of about 10.2, 10.3mm. So you can just measure it here. When you get them out of the packet, what I like to do is just give them a good squeeze with a pair of pliers. A couple of times, that just breaks it up a little bit. Gives you a little bit more consistent clutch to start with. After you break a little bit, it will go down to about 10.15, 10.2, and she's ready to go. With the spring, spring is crucial. Um, you want to ensure that the spring never gets below 9.8. Once it reaches 9.8 in length, then it's um, garbage and you want to replace that. So what we're going to do is grab our Loctite. Also very important, chuck a little bit on the thread here. You don't want to go too much, just a little dab. Um, the last thing you want is your clutch to come undone during a, a main final. Throw our spring over it that we've already compressed. Then we get our adjust nut. Wind that on. There's a couple of ways to adjust your clutch and to measure it. Some people and the manual will tell you to wind the clutch in until the spring bottoms out and turn it out 1.5 turns. That's a good way to do it. Um, I like to measure it with verniers. So we grab our clutch tool, we measure it down. Now 1.5 turns gives you about one mil gap between the top of the flywheel nut and the adjusting spring nut. A really good setting for a new spring will be between 1.2 to 1.5 mil. And with a spring that's run in that's probably about uh, 10 mil, 10.1 in length, you wanna go out to about 1.7, that's the max. 
you can measure the distance from the flywheel nut to the adjust nut with a pair of verniers. So the way we do this is grab the end of your verniers onto the clutch nut, put on them out, zero the verniers, and then do the same procedure but go from the end of the crank down to the adjust nut. As you can see that measurement 0.85 so we need to go in a little bit further. We're going to set this one at about uh, 1.2. I also have these cool tools that uh, you need instead of the verniers. They're pretty handy. So with this one you just slide it over the crank wind it down. We got 1.5 so that's probably a little bit too much. We'll just back that off a little bit and get into our range that we want to be in. 1.3. That's going to do for the moment. So from here we need to uh, now throw our bell on. We've got all our assembly on. It's locked tighted. It's not going to come off. Shoes are nice and square and flat and we've got our spring uh, wound down to where it needs to be. So the bell's pretty simple. I've already put the uh, pinions on. Um, we've got one bearing in the back. What you want to do is just use a couple of the shims provided. I think the uh, manual says about 0.3 from standard. Pretty ad hoc with it. One bearing on. You just want our bell on there and make sure the bell covers the shoes. So as you can see it's on there pretty nice. So you can use those shims and adjust it, the bell up or down depending on where the engine sits in your car to make the right mesh. I'll do another video to show you how I install my engines in my cars in a uh, later stage. But after you've thrown those um, shims and bearings in, you've got two on the top. Then you can grab your stopper straight in. 2.5mm, we'll wind that down. Here we just want to check for play. So we're going to use these shims to take out the slop and at the moment we've got a, a lot of slop in there. So we're just going to probably use most of those shims to take that slop out. After putting that many shims in, still got a little bit of slop, but you want a little bit of play in there. When everything gets hot, you don't want it binding up. Um, about 0 0.2, 0 0.3 is really nice to have when it's cold. Once you've uh, got all your slop, just make sure that your screw is extremely tight, not too tight, because you don't want to snap it off in the crank. And you have just built your GT adjustable clutch, ready to hit the track. We'll show you a little video on what it should sound like. Cheers.